Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel and another little tutorial on the Empress Effects Zoya, the modular patchable synthesizer in a little box with the unique grid interface and where the only limitation is your imagination and the CPU, of course. Now, you may notice a few new things about my Zoya today. First of all, you can see I have new buttons on it, and that is because uh, I always, always use my Zoya as a desktop device, and I don't like the stomp switches on the Zoya for pushing with my hands. They are not that great switches for having it on the desktop. They're fine for the floor, of course. They're not too bad for a desktop, but I definitely prefer a switch intended for fingers. And also these are, they stick up a little bit less. They are softer and they also have, they're quieter and they also have micro switches, which means that the connection between off and on is going to be clean rather than the slightly fuzzy one you sometimes get on the Zoya's stomp switches. I'm not going to make a tutorial on how to add your own switches to the Zoya because uh, that is would be a tutorial in how to cut a wire, strip a wire and solder a wire. And basically that is a basic electronics tutorial, which I'm sure there are lots of already on YouTube. Um, so I'm not going to do that one. Now, uh, what I'm going to make a tutorial of one of these days is my new headphone jack. I just um, thought it would be more convenient to have one full-size quarter-inch headphone jack on the side, which is basically just soldered, wired in parallel with the left and right outputs at the back here. I will make a tutorial about that because that can be a little bit more confusing. And, but none of those things are what I'm going to show you today. Today, I want to show you how you can use the expression port or the control port to create an expressive controller with a potentiometer, like this one. Um, doesn't have a knob because I couldn't find it, but well, there is a knob somewhere in my belongings, but uh, I don't know where it is. Um, just to show you the principle of it, this is the one I'm using today. Uh, so, now the way the control port works is it needs a stereo jack. So I'm just gonna go through that first of all. Um, so it needs a three pole plug, like this one, a stereo plug, you would usually think of it as. Uh, it has a tip, it has a ring, and it has a sleeve, so three different poles. Um, and the way it works, of course, you can send out MIDI, you can send out CV, and you can connect expression pedals. But for this, you want to have it in CV mode. And what the Zoya does is it sends out CV, control voltage, on the ring. It receives on the tip. And, of course, sleeve is common voltage reference, ground, if you like, uh, zero volts. Um... So I'm just gonna plug that in now. And then at the other end here, we have, this is a stereo jack. This is the same as I got for my headphone jack, by the way. Um, and it's got three poles, as you can see, it got the tip, the ring and the sleeve. And I've connected the tip to the blue wire, the ring to the green wire and the sleeve, the ground to the black wire. I'm not sure if you can see those very well. I'll just move my light a little bit so you can see it better um, and they are wired up to this potentiometer and the potentiometer has three poles as well um, there are different ways of wiring up a potentiometer to make it work but the standard way as far as i understand it is you have the output oops the output in the middle and then you have ground and input on the sides, depending on which direction you want the potentiometer to go. I want it to go from low to high, from left to right. And what works in this case then is for me to put the input on the left pole here and the output on the right. Sometimes when you see diagrams for potentiometers, it's of course viewed from the other direction. So it all depends because that's the side you wire on. So 
it can be a bit confusing sometimes and the best way to do it is just try it out and see if it, you get the desired result but output in the middle and ground and input on the left or the right side and then we get a let's see uh yes and of course then the idea is that i send out on the cv output because the voltage has to come from somewhere and it's coming from the Zoya. So the CV output I've just set to have a value out of 1.000, which means that the Zoya sends out the full, I think it is five volts uh, to the potentiometer. And then on the input from the, on the control port, it gauges how much of that voltage comes back which it will change depending on how you rotate the potentiometer. So the CV input here is the one that now will change depending on the position of the potentiometer. You can see it moving there and you can see it goes down to 0 0.0042. It varies a bit and up to uh, roughly 0 0.6729 it varies a bit as well most potentiometers aren't super accurate and this is part of what i want to show you today is how to compensate for that to make sure that you always have a nice clean zero to one output from a potentiometer that you can use for anything in your patch so 0 0.46 now 6729 Four, four, six, seven, two, six. It will vary quite a bit. So I'm just going to switch off the light now because I can show you now on the Zoya. Okay, so we have not the full range from zero to one, as you can see on the input. And these numbers may be different for your potentiometer. I have only tried it with one now, but the principle for how to adjust it will be the same. Usually you would not get down to zero and you definitely wouldn't get go down to minus on a potentiometer. Um, but, and also you wouldn't go up to one probably. You didn't, wouldn't want to. So, um, but you want to convert this into a value that ideally goes a little bit below zero and then a little bit above zero. And the reason is that since there is a bit of variability at both the bottom and the top ends, you don't want to have a situation where the output from your potentiometer is a little bit above zero, like 0 0.008, or it doesn't reach one, it is 0 0.9995, for instance. And the reason is that sometimes something special in your patch is meant to happen when the value is exactly one maximum or zero minimum. And by converting the input from this potentiometer now to zero to one, you make sure that it always will be compatible to whatever function you may want to use it for in your patch. So the first thing I do is I want to increase the range so that, or the multiply up the range to make sure that it reaches zero and uh, goes a little bit beyond. And the way I've done that is by patching the CV input now into a value module with a connection strength of 161.6. This was just done by, by eye really, just to see what worked. And now we have a value module that now gets a value from, okay, hang on, hang on. I just have to remove this offset now. That gets a value from, well, now it's at the bottom. It is 0 0.83 and I go to the top and it goes, to one and a little bit beyond, just a little bit. And that's fine. It wants You want it to go above one all the time, consistently. Uh, now the bottom, you want it to be below zero so that you can make sure you can get a value of zero. And the way I do that is with a value module here that is set to bipolar values. That is to say it can do negative values, which is a setting in the uh, module settings here where you set output to minus one to one and then you can set a an offset to I'll do about 0 0.0098 patch that into this value module and then it subtracts that from the value in the module so now the bottom value now is minus 0 0.0023 and it goes up to still above one make sure it always goes above one if it ever goes below then you want to adjust the 
the multiplication here, the um, connection strength to make sure it does. And always below zero now is important as well. And this looks good. This looks very good. Now, and then you want to convert this to make sure that the output then is always between zero and one. You, have to re you want to remove the minus, but you don't want it to go up again, so you can't invert the value in, in any way. So the easiest way to do this, uh, as far as um, I can figure out, is to, there may be other ways, but this is easy for me and it doesn't use much CPU. Um, you have a comparator module here. So what a comparator does is it has two inputs known as the positive and the negative input. And as long as the value in the positive input, which is the first pad here, is equal to or higher than the value in the negative input, the comparator module outputs a value of one. It is a, outputs a value of one or zero. It's a binary output module. So we patch the value module here into the positive input. And that means that now that it, when it is below zero, this comparator will output zero. It only outputs one when the value passes, I'll just see, you can see it's zero there. When it passes there, when it passes zero is the only time it will output a value of one, um, which means now it sort of detects when the value is negative or rather it detects when the value is positive. And we can use that to ignore what's below zero by sending the output of the comparator into a multiplier. A multiplier can have more than two inputs, but this one has two. And what it does, it multiplies the values at the two inputs. So we have one input, which is from the value module. So that's our minus 0 0.05 to 1 coming in there. And then it multiplies that by the comparator output. So that means when the value of the input now, the value module from the potentiometer goes below zero, it multiplies the value from that potentiometer by zero, which means that instead of a negative value, you get zero. And when it is zero and above, it multiplies it by one, and so you get all the positive values. And that means the output of the multiplier now will always be between zero and one. Consistently and always. And that is the output that we now take and use in our patch for controlling whatever we want and if you want a smaller range again, it's a lot easier to start with something that is already made to be precisely or as precisely as possible to be 0 to 1. So if you wanted to control something uh, from a 0 0.25 to 0 0.75, for instance, then you can do that by uh, setting a connection strength of 50% and adding an offset in the receiving module of 0 0.25. Simple as that. So by having zero to one as a value, that's when you get your maximum flexibility uh, in how you can use it further in the patch. So that is how you can do it. And, um, and of course it is possible uh, to fit in a little potentiometer on the side here if you want to be fancy and you can have a little controller there, but it's a little bit uncomfortable to reach. I'm thinking maybe I want to have something on the side here, a little extension maybe, or a little sort of box next to my Zaya I can use with it, but I haven't decided what to do yet. But um, I don't use my expression port for a lot, so I may use make a little sort of side extender module that has an expressive potentiometer on it, maybe a slider, I haven't decided, and, um, and also it has connections for using the uh, CV port for something else if I need to, um, but I'll, uh, I'll experiment with some other uses as well. But this is the main one, I think, uh, is to have a sort of creative, smooth control for something. A slider or a potentiometer, absolutely brilliant. So 
that's what I wanted to show you today. Very useful little thing you can do with the Zoya. All you need is a potentiometer, some cables, and and to know what you're doing, basically. And um, yeah. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful and or interesting. And if you use this in your own patches, then please feel free to let me know as well. So uh, I'll see you next time where I might do a video about my headphone jack, possibly. Uh, might be the next one up. I'll see what I feel like when the time comes. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.